Hello and welcome to Spinsters Library. I'm Claudia and today I am doing the Sorting Hat Challenge Classics Edition. So, as you can tell, this is going to be a little bit of a Harry Potter slash classic literature crossover. And what this is, is a tag in which you talk about book characters and figure out which Hogwarts house they would be sorted into. I was tagged to do this by Pauline from Dancing Lawn, so thank you very much Pauline. I'll link her tag video in the description box. Her version of the tag was pretty fun and she spoke about some of the characters that I too have put on my list. So I have chosen some really mainstream big name classics for this bit because I always think these kinds of tag videos are more fun if everyone watching them also knows the characters and then you can agree or disagree with me. What I've done is I've written down 17 names, 17 main characters or prominent characters from classic literature, both 18th and, no sorry, both 19th and 20th century and I have put them in this little old sweet spot container. And I'm going to start pulling out names out of this metaphorical hat and talk about which Hogwarts houses I think they should go into. I haven't set a number yet for how many people I want to sort into the Hogwarts house, but let's just see how much I have to say about each one. Okay, and the first character is Elizabeth Bennet from Pride and Prejudice. This is an easy one, right? Elizabeth is obviously a Gryffindor and uh, if you disagree with me then you're just wrong here. She has all of the characteristics of a Gryffindor. She is brave, she's very headstrong, but she also shows the negative traits of Gryffindor. Mainly she is quite proud you know, we often think that the Pride and Prejudice part, that Pride um, applies to Mr. Darcy and Prejudice applies to Elizabeth Bennet. But I do think she's very proud and vain in some regards as well. She thinks a lot of herself and her own abilities. She... I don't want to say she likes to be the centre of attention because I don't think that's fair on her. But she certainly holds her own when she is the centre of attention. And everything she does is based on principle and conviction and I think that is one of the main traits of a Gryffindor. That makes me think though, how would I sort the other Bennet sister? Um, Jane, obviously Hufflepuff. Mary, I know she would like to be a Ravenclaw. Oh, poor Mary's probably a squib, isn't she? Lydia Bennet, probably a Gryffindor as well. She's not as unlike Elizabeth as you'd think. And then Kitty Bennett is barely even a character. Let's move on to the next character. And we've got, come on, focus. There, the new Mrs. De Winter. And this is, of course, the unnamed main character from Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. She is an interesting one. Considering that we see the book from her perspective, it is a first-person narrative, I feel like we know very little about her. Obviously, she has a mysterious past that the reader doesn't really find out about. But also, she is very much reactive to her surroundings. So she very rarely does something out of conviction. I mean, obviously, I don't want to spoil the book, but right at the end, you know, her real true self kind of shines through. So I find it difficult to sort her into a house. I would probably have to say, she's not Gryffindor. She doesn't seem like a Slytherin. So I'm torn between Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw. Um, I'm going to have to say Hufflepuff purely because she aims to please. She aims to please her new husband. She even aims to not please, but kind of placate. Is that the right word? Yes, it is. <laughs> so she aims to placate the, um, the old, oh, I can't think of words today, housekeeper. Yeah. Mrs. Danvers. So she 
she tries to fit into her surroundings in a way that I don't think a Ravenclaw would. So I think I'm going to go with Hufflepuff. Then let's move on to the next slip of paper. And we've got, ooh, we're really getting a good variety of classics in here. Sarah Crewe from A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. One of my absolute favorite newly discovered classics. I only read this one last year for the first time really truly loved it and one of the reasons why I love this book so much is because the main character Sarah is such an engaging character she is oh I mean you just like I could just listen to her for hours and in fact you kind of do when you read the book her main characteristic is definitely her moral grounding I guess. She is a very principled character. She instinctively knows what is right and what is wrong even when she's thrown into different situations. So I think that too makes her a Hufflepuff, a very very different Hufflepuff to the new Mrs. De Winter. But I think Sarah operates on principle and on what is right, which of course makes her close to Gryffindor as well, but I think Sarah does it in a more inward looking, quiet way rather than a kind of outward saving the world's um, hero kind of way that Gryffindors do. So I'm going to put Sarah Crew in Hufflepuff. Let's see who's up next. Am I even holding this the right way? Dorian Gray. The main character in The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, obviously. He's a very interesting character because his life and his behavior and his personality changes within the first few pages of The Picture of Dorian Gray under the influence of Lord Henry Wotton. And um, I think Dorian Gray is going to be our very first Slytherin. And actually this one's not an obvious one either for me. I'm kind of torn between Slytherin and Hufflepuff, which seems strange, right? Because you think of those two as polar opposites. But I think what nudges it to Slytherin for me is that once Dorian Gray has tasted the decadent life, he wants it for himself. He is looking out for number one, which is Dorian Gray. He actually ruins people's lives for his own gain. And I don't think that makes him a villain. It just makes him a very self-centered person, which is the main characteristic of a Slytherin. So I'm going to put Dorian Gray in Slytherin, the very first Slytherin today. So far we have one Slytherin, one Gryffindor, two Hufflepuffs and no Ravenclaws yet. Let's see if the next one can change that. Maybe I'll just do this video until I got at least one character in every house. Who is this going to be? <laughs> Marianne Dashwood. Ooh. Focus, focus. So this is another Jane Austen character from Sense and Sensibility. She's one of the two main characters in that book and she is the sensibility in Sense and Sensibility, meaning she's a very emotional character again. She doesn't just express her emotion, but, but she wallows in her emotions. She really identifies with the emo emotionality of her being. And I'm going to make this very short because that is another pure Gryffindor. There's just no other way around it. Marianne Dashwood goes in Gryffindor. She lives for the outside. She doesn't keep anything inside of her own mind. When she's in love, then everyone knows it. When she hates someone, everyone knows it. She can't hold back. She can't hold anything in. And I think that is very, very Gryffindor. Right, so we still haven't had a Ravenclaw, which makes me sad because I'm a Ravenclaw and I want to find someone. So let's see. Who's up next? Oh, Dr. Watson from the Sherlock Holmes stories. Is he a Ravenclaw? No, he is another Gryffindor. Next. Right, okay, maybe let's talk about Dr. Watson for a bit. And I think Dr. Watson is almost like the archetypal Gryffindor book hero. 
he is a man of action. He's the one who brings the gun to the gunfight. He is the one who wants to protect people, who throws himself into danger. Yeah, who's just always in the middle of the action. Now, unlike some other Gryffindor heroes like Harry Potter, uh, Dr. Watson doesn't necessarily try and remain in the spotlight. He very much wants to shine the spotlight on his friend Sherlock Holmes, the true hero of the Sherlock Holmes stories. Uh, but yet, in his personality, he is much more of a heroic guy than Sherlock Holmes is. And therefore, Dr. Watson becomes our fourth Gryffindor. I don't think this is a coincidence. I do think that Gryffindors make the best book characters. Well, the best main characters, because you want to read about someone who's proactive, who's trying to change things, who's principled, who's outward looking. You don't want to just read about some introverted nerd uh, who doesn't really interact much with the world. I mean, I do, but I can see why other people might not, and I can see why authors aren't necessarily drawn to those kinds of characters as their main character. Ah, <sighs> let's see. This next one better be a Ravenclaw. Ah, and he is. So next up we have Dr. Frankenstein from Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Yes, we, we have got a Ravenclaw book hero, or anti-hero. See what I mean? He's not a very typical hero. So Dr. Frankenstein, I don't need to spoiler the book for you, but I'm pretty sure you know the basic premise that Dr. Frankenstein manages to create life. And, and his creature then runs havoc and goes on a big old murder spree. I mean, there's some stuff that happens in between, but again, I'm not going to retell the whole book for you. But Dr. Frankenstein is possibly the archetypal literary scientist. He is curious about how life works and he combines that curiosity with an academic ability and a spark of creativity because he doesn't just create life because he reads a lot of books about biology but he actually tries to make something new and I think that again is a very Ravenclaw trait. So Ravenclaws aren't just the book nerds but they're also the people who um, see the world in a slightly different way, like Luna Lovegood from the Harry Potter series, and who try and, and create something new. Like, for example, even though that is obviously in a bad way, like, for example, Professor Quirrell from the Harry Potter series. They are driven by not just the thirst for knowledge, but also just this creative energy. And I think Dr. Frankenstein is very much that. So... I said I'm going to finish this when I've got all four houses full and at the end of this challenge I've got one Ravenclaw, Dr. Frankenstein, one Slytherin, Dorian Gray. Hang on, did I put anyone in Hufflepuff? Oh yes, the new Mrs. De Winter and Sarah Crewe are my Hufflepuffs and then three Gryffindors which are Marianne Dashwood, Dr. Watson and Elizabeth Bennet. So, I want to know from you, of course, if you disagree with any of these picks, tell me in the comments which houses you would sort these characters into. And if you agree with me that, unfortunately, even though I don't like to admit it, Gryffindors make the best main characters. That was it for today. At the end of this, I'm supposed to be tagging some people. However, I'm genuinely not sure who has done it already. Now the one person I would like to tag, because I'm pretty sure she hasn't done it, is Andrea from Infinite Text. She's fairly new to Harry Potter. She only read it for the first time last year, I believe, last year or this year, quite recently anyway. So uh, I would like to hear from her how she would sort some of her favorite book characters. But other than Andrea, I'm not going to tag people. If you want to do this tag, then make sure you comment on my video to tell me that you've done it so I can go and check it out as well, because I think this is a really fun idea for a book tag. That was it for today. Thank you for watching. Bye.